You're running ads on Facebook and Instagram, and you need to figure out exactly how to analyze your results to get the best return possible. In this video, we're gonna break down exactly how we analyze every single metric in the Facebook ad platform. We are gonna be looking inside of an account over a 30 day time frame. The one thing I wanna mention here is that you need to have enough data to analyze. If you just launched your ads yesterday, give it a couple of days, let the algorithm work a little bit for you, and then start to look at the data and make decisions. What you don't wanna do is delete ads, make changes, change your copy, create new videos or images when you've only run your data or run your ads for a few days. You need to make sure you have enough time and enough data here to make real decisions. Here's what we're gonna do. There's basically two groupings of metrics. First, there's your primary metrics. These are things that you know. This is your purchases, maybe your ROAS, which would be your return on ad spend. On the flip side, there's the secondary metrics. These are all the metrics that are way more complicated, but actually make those purchases happen. These are things like click the rate, cost per click, CPM, how much does your advertising cost? Total impressions, reach. So we're gonna break this down. First, we're gonna look at the primary metrics. On the flip side, we're gonna look at those secondary metrics. And this is where we're gonna get detailed and really talk about how each metric influences ultimately getting that purchase. Over the last 30 days, this account has spent $31,000. This account has driven 2,000 purchases over the last 30 days. Be mindful of the amount of spend that you have per campaign. We don't wanna make decisions if a campaign has spent $35. That might not be enough time to really make any action. Same thing on purchases. If you have zero purchases, give it a little bit more time. The ideal scenario, according to Facebook, is to have 25 purchases. Now, that's quite a lot. If you have to wait 25 purchases to make a decision, that could be a little bit too long and really could be kind of a hit to how much money you're spending. So what I like to say is if we get five to 10 purchases, we could start to look at the data. Next is our cost per purchase. This is where we could start to analyze a little bit. We wanna look at cost per purchase and ROAS or return on ad spend. Cost per purchase is, as it says, how much do you have to pay to drive one single purchase? So what we like to do here is understand the relationship between cost per purchase and your total ROAS. So for this example, we have this campaign here that drives a $9.96 cost per purchase and also drives a 10 ROAS and a $9 cost per acquisition is also very strong for that. What we wanna just be aware of here is when we have a scenario where the cost per purchase is $9, but the ROAS is super, super low. That could mean pixel issues. That could also mean that people are buying the wrong products. So a lot of times stores, maybe your store in particular, will have one hero product that's $200 followed by accessories, right? We don't want people buying three, $5 accessories on your store because that's gonna sink the actual value and revenue that you're driving and just get you a lot of low value purchases, which won't be worth it for you. The next metric we wanna look at is the add to cart and the cost per add to cart. What we try to look at here is what's our add to cart rate or how much does it cost to get someone to add a product to their cart, which eventually will flow into how many purchases are made. So if we see a very low cost per add to cart, we generally see a very cheap cost per purchase, low cost per add to cart, a lot of add to carts typically means a lot of purchases are coming. If you're running a group of campaigns and you see, for example, no purchases yet or just a few purchases, but you see a bunch of add to carts, this basically means for you that there's a really good chance these people are about to convert. Maybe there's a tweak you need to make at checkout. Maybe there's just a few changes you need to make, but this is still a really, really, really positive sign for you. All right, the next metric we're gonna look at is the initiated checkout. Initiated checkout basically means after they've added to cart, they get to the actual checkout. This is where if you've ever bought something online, you actually enter your billing information. You tell them your address. You literally put your credit card in and everything up to the purchase is the initiate checkout. This is a really important metric because what it does is it tells us that the person didn't just play around on your site. They're actually much more serious about making a purchase. When I look at the initiate checkout of these two campaigns, right off the bat, I'm gonna be able to tell you that this RT campaign is going to perform better Better. from a purchase perspective, it's gonna drive more revenue for the business than the top campaign we have here because it's cheaper to get someone to initiate a checkout. We have these two examples. The bottom one drives a $6.82 cost per checkout. The top one drives a $10.54 cost per checkout. Simple version of this. When we scroll to the left here, we then very clearly see the ROAS of the bottom campaign, which had the cheaper cost per initiated checkout, has a much higher ROAS. More revenue is being driven from this 
this campaign in particular. We are going to take a look at the cost per outbound click. Cost per click means that someone may have clicked on the comment button, liked your Instagram ad, or clicked on your profile, did something interactive, that's a click. What we care about is the cost per outbound click. This means they actually went to your site. What we have here across the board is around a dollar and eight average for this account. But what we notice is there's a difference pretty clearly between the cost per click of each campaign. We want to look at this, especially at the ad level, to understand if one ad or one campaign or even an ad set is driving a different cost per click, which usually indicates that there's a difference in the creative. The very simple version of this is if you have a higher cost per outbound click, your ads are probably going to perform slightly worse. We have our impressions, our reach, and our frequency. Impressions are just how many people saw your ads. That's this column right here. Reach is how many unique people saw your ads. So impressions, we just say have total amount of ads that were shown to people. Reach, we have the number of people that saw the ads. And then we have frequency. So frequency is how many times the same people saw your ads. It's okay to have a decently high frequency, but what we don't want over long periods of time is to show ads to the same people 30, 40 times, because then we're just wasting our money. There's basically a scale how many times someone should be seeing an ad. But as a general rule, when you start to get over a 10 frequency, you really need to pull back spend on that particular audience. For reach and impressions in general, CPM stands for cost per 1000 impressions. This is generally known in the advertising space as how much does it cost for you to advertise? If you see your CPM is climbing, it's getting higher and higher and higher every single month, you have to be careful. This usually means that your ad creative is fatiguing. Maybe your website experience isn't too smooth. CPM is the gold standard for are you getting cheap enough impressions to then drive purchases. In this account's case, these all play within a $3 difference in CPM. That's pretty great. But what we see sometimes in new accounts that we've taken on, we'll see a $20 difference in a CPM from one campaign to the other. Now this could mean we have one CPM at $10, and another CPM at $30 or $40. What that would tell us is we need to lower the spend on the $30 and $40 campaign, and we need to evaluate what are the ads inside it? What elements could be making this cost of advertising so high? So we broke down the campaign level. Now, the campaigns and the ad sets generally could apply the same metric relationships. However, at the ad level, we need to really analyze what creative, whether it's image, video, GIFs, slideshows, et cetera, how those are impacting all the metrics we just went through. So that's going to be in a video right over here. In that video, we are going to go through every single metric we just went through again, but we're going to take it on the ad level. And then we're also going to look at a few things like how videos are impacted, CPMs, how images impact purchase rates, conversion rates, and so on. If you think this video in any way, shape, or form is going to help you drive more money to your business, hit the subscribe button. It means a whole lot. Thanks.